Marlon Brando. If you ever lived in the world without the show business, what would you ever done? I don't know. I might have been a masseur. I might have been a... He moved like that earlier. You laugh as though you know something. Uh, I might have been a, a forest ranger. Uh, could have been a drummer. Drummed for a while. I worked... Uh, did a little manual labor, but I hated that. Uh, I don't know. Marlon Brando, one of the most exciting and talented men <clears throat> in America today. Oh, come on. <laughs> and certainly, if I may use a pun, please. Physically and mentally, you are not an ugly American. No. You're anything no. but. But certainly, physically, there's so much activity in all of the movies that you do. How can you, you keep... What was the last time you saw me nude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell it. I won't if you won't. I'm <laughs> getting real fat. Tell me. In a New York hotel, Marlon Brando agreed to meet with television reporters from across the country. The subject, his latest film. The reporters ask many predictable questions. Mr. Brando gives few predictable answers. Marlon Brando has always reserved the right to think for himself, to answer for himself, and if necessary, to go against the grain. It's a wonderful show. I've talked to people who have previewed it, and they tell me... Uh, I, I don't think that we should believe what we hear, even if it's a good report, and even if it's a, if it's, if it's a bad report. We, we have to make up our own minds about it. I think that's essential. And uh, don't you, you should make up your mind about that picture until you see it. You know, this is sort of, it's a, sort of your whole personality in a capsule. Not to believe that... How do you know what my personality is? Because I have met you and you, you radiate your personality. Really? Uh-huh. Oh. Excuse me, does your Indian movie as a title yet? No. no. All right. Uh, now, as I mentioned uh, many times on this program, we do get around, and today we're having breakfast in the Hampshire House in New York. How's that? We've dropped names, huh? Well, it's lunch. First it's well, lunch. I, I don't want to... It's... How, what time is it? It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion picture called Moratory. we better get all the plugs in because 20th Century Fox has spent a zillion now, wait bucks... Wait a minute. I, I object. You mean in my, in my relating to 20th Century Fox? No, the thing is that we all, every time we get in front of the television, everybody starts hustling. Yes. And you feel that you're obliged to hustle the picture, and, uh, and uh, I feel reduced to hoxtamanship. But after all, they did pay a fortune for this, the, the purpose. We would never be sitting here if they didn't want to hux to the picture. I don't think we've got to kind of sneak around it. I think we've got to say we're here as, as hucksters. Yes. He's a newsman, and I'm, <laughs> I'm a huckster. <laughs> and I'm something in a tub for a More picture tour. called Moratory. Yeah. I'm at New York's Hampshire House, where we have just attended a very gala luncheon, which was hosted by one of the members of the power elite of his world, Mr. Marlon Brando. Very often... You're one of the prettiest uh, interviewers that I've... Uh... Thank you. You're one of the most gracious hosts I've ever met. Oh, really? Yes. Mr. Brando, very often you have been... Uh... What are you chuckling about? <laughs> You're in the sound department. Do you want to leave? <laughs> exactly. Enjoys your explanation of the word. Very often you have been uh, called by members of the press uncooperative, and sometimes uncooperative in, in what respect? In, in relation uh, to what? In making films with the producers and the directors who have sometimes worked with oh, yeah. you. <clears throat> but we've never really heard your version or your side or what your feelings are about this. You seem certainly to us today to be a very gracious and articulate man. Well, I don't really think it's worth the candle to, to go into the defense of those spurious uh, accusations. Uh, I think that uh, people usually make up their own mind about you, and uh, uh, it's sort of boring to go into a defense and an explanation of how you have been chastised or accused or... Well, why has so much been written about this in the press? Well, yeah, there, there. Uh, you see, people don't realize that a press item, a news item, is money, and that uh, news is hawked in the same way that shoes are, toothpaste, or lipstick, or or hair tonic, or anything else. And if you uh, put something uh, in the paper about Elizabeth Taylor or uh, Richard Burton, everybody's going to buy it. You know, and everybody wants to know about that. So it it becomes an an, an item. And it becomes a sellable item, and it's uh, 
it's uh, the merchandising aspect of the press is uh, not really fully recognized, I think, by the public. And uh, when you don't cooperate with those uh, merchandising systems, people that sell news, like Hedda Hawker, <laughs> that's a good mistake. Had a hawker. <laughs> but you chose to keep it. You chose it. You didn't correct it. <laughs> you know, it's uh, sort of an unwritten uh, code that if you don't cooperate with those people and tell them about the, the intimacies of your personal life, then uh, you've uh, you, you've broken the rule and uh, you have to be ch publicly uh, chastised for it or, or chubbically chastised for it, if you like. <laughs> And, um, well, that's the way of the world out there. But uh, I found, by and large, that uh, people make up their own minds. Thank you very much. For well, I hope this isn't the end of my career. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I want to pay you one You know, people before. change subconsciously when they're on camera. <laughs> uh, first of all, you're so pretty, I'm distracted by the, <laughs> by the fact you're asking me questions, and you're, you're 22, which is absurd. For whom? Well, I mean, for someone in the press, I mean, usually you meet women that are more mature. Well, I know you're starring in the film, and uh, from all reports that it, it will be excellent, but that isn't my purpose. I would just like to know what consumes your thoughts in your spare time, when you have any. Well, my thoughts are cons What do you do? I'm Vincent in your face. And, uh... Thank you very much, Mr. Brando, for visiting with me. Entirely welcome. And uh, I hope to see you in Chicago. <laughs> We'd like to see you in Chicago. We? Is that the collective we or is that... Uh... There are many people who would like to see you in Chicago. But you don't want to see me in Chicago. Certainly I do. <laughs> and if Marlon Brando does come to Chicago, we will be there to welcome him. Oh, good. He'll give me some adventure. <laughs> We have the pleasure now of talking with perhaps one of the most famous actors in the world, Mr. Marlon Brando. Not yet till I get finished with the role. All right, beef. you keep eating, I'll keep introducing. <laughs> well, he's played a variety of roles, from uh, Shakespearean in uh, productions like Julius Caesar to, of course, Stanley Kowalski in Streetcar Named Desire. He received an Academy Award for On the Waterfront in 1954. Is that correct? I guess so. And the big thing about you, Marlon, is that yeah. you play My such stomach. a variety of roles. <laughs> and you play them all well. That is, no matter what part uh, you achieve, it, it, it comes out very well. How do you account for this uh, great versatility? Is it something you studied, or does it just come to you naturally? Uh, you know, you can say that the you say the same thing about a hula hoop. And it catches on, and everybody buys it. And it's quite popular for a while, and then it disappears like fly swatters. Uh -huh. Hardly anybody buys a fly swatter nowadays. Well, the, uh, the point of the question was that I think your biography mentioned you had studied something uh, like a year, and then the breaks began to come, and they became, uh, they came very thick and very fast. Well, I think that actors, uh, it's very difficult to go into it uh, comprehensively here. But I think that actors are uh, uh, created, uh, the, 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 uh, the psychology of acting is created early in, youth. I mean, we're all actors. Uh -huh. You're sitting here, and you, the way you conduct yourself in this interview is not the way you conduct yourself at a, at a bar with some of your friends. You're much that's more relaxed. That's quite true. And uh, by the same token, uh, 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 actors don't... Uh, uh, I mean, one is able to adjust oneself to a situation. Would you say that uh, your handling of roles is a reflection of yourself as a person completely un, uh, away from uh, stress or I strain? I think the handling of anything that we do in life is a reflection of ourselves. All right, basically, I think we should talk about uh, Moratori. Would you rather not Huckster anymore? Let's talk about contact lenses. I read someplace that you got six new... You got the longest fingernails of anybody I've ever seen. No, not only on one side. See, I play classic guitar. Oh, really? So you have to have long fingernails on your right hand to play the strings and short fingernails to fret. That's what I do for my kicks. What do you do? Oh, well, I fret a lot. Yeah, yes, you do. <laughs> I don't fret for kicks. I fret when I have to. Uh, your turn. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Marlon Brando, a nonconformist. How do you keep from getting scars? I don't. <laughs> I got a scar here, and uh, I got a scar on my knee, and uh, a few scars on my soul. Ah. And, uh, 
How do you keep from getting scarred in your business? Well, I will go along with the scars on one's soul, but I think that just makes the development of character. Does it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I suppose we have to talk about more Tyrion. It is no, a wonderful let's don't. show. No, Do we That's have not... to? It's a wonderful show. Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it yet. But well, how I, do you know? I've... Because I've talked to people who have previewed it, and they tell me that it is very suspenseful. Now, that's the point. Mostly that's the in point. The dark. We mustn't believe propaganda. It might be an absolutely terrible film. You don't know. We haven't seen this picture yet, but I'm here to tell you I'll bet it's a great picture. Isn't it, Marlon? It sure is, pal. Bill. All the pictures... Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I you could call me Bill. And all the pictures they make in Hollywood are really great films, and they really everybody are. knows that, and... Uh... They haven't made a bad picture there in, in 90 years. years, isn't it? That's right. That last picture, last year gets from no. Misfit. That was probably the last bad picture that I think Hollywood made. Well, it's been wonderful talking to you, and I, yeah, it's a real checkered coat, and, and <laughs> both for Wilkie. Right. <laughs> and, uh... Marlon, it's sure been wonderful having you on our program, and it's just, uh, it's always a pleasure talking with a great star, and you oh, really are a boy. great star. What are you smiling about? You tickled me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the whole thing over again. Marlon Brando, we'll be right back after these messages of great interest. <laughs> Do you think, uh, Marlon Brando, that an actor must, on account of his personality and his prestige, that an actor should commit himself on social issues? Je crois que les gens, les gens ici, les portoricains qui, qui regardent moi maintenant dans les rues ne savent pas qu'est-ce que c'est les gens qui passent. I think that people who are looking at me right now, these Puerto Ricans, and the people who are passing right here on the street, and you who are the camera, you all have an obligation. We are all responsible. You are responsible for France as an individual. You give much responsibility to General de Gaulle, but you personally are responsible, and so am I. Are you Marlon Brando? Yes. How do you do? It's very nice to meet you. What is your name? Say hello. Hello, sweetheart. Are you making a movie here? Just talking. Uh, uh, would you come in here? This is for the French... Uh, I think you asked me before if the American government is responsible for the progress of Negroes, and I said no. Here is a woman who can answer this question. I can ask her, and you can translate. I'd like to ask you if you think that, uh, that the American government is responsible for the progress of the uh, Negro in recent years here in America. No, I don't. Not at all. Whatever has been done or whatever is going to be done, they're going to have to do it. That's the case. Thank you very much. And thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Looking at the smile very carefully here. Yeah. We're at the Hampshire House, overlooking Central Park in New York City. We're visiting with Mr. Marlon Brando. I have a kind of fond memory to this place because uh, this is the uh, Hampshire House. I think. I'm, yeah. I, was, well, I mean, one can be confused in this day and age. It's permissible. But I was staying here one time when I was dead broke. Are you a native New Yorker? No, I was born in. Uh, I'm a corn husker. I was born in Nebraska. It shows we get the wrong impression. You're so convincing and on the waterfront. Where do you hail from? Our television show is called Ten Around Town, and it's in Philadelphia. Were you born there? Yes, I was. So I'm a native Philadelphian, although I live here in New York now. You think there's more brotherly love in the state of Pennsylvania than there is in Alabama? 
Yes. Really? I think the North has its problems with brotherly love, just in some ways very much the way the South does. Mm -hmm. Have you got, you're interested in this. You're active working for it. Have you any ideas of solutions? We get lots of criticisms in New York City, in Philadelphia, in the South. But there aren't very many offers of solutions coming. Well, it's very difficult. I think that the uh, solution for animosity among people is a profound one. Uh, do uh, Dr. Leakey, who has been spent a great deal of time in the Andalusian Gorge in Africa, Tanganyika region, has, uh, uh, has uh, produced evidence that there is a baboon <laughs> who carried a weapon and went around killing uh, other baboons and other forms of life. And uh, his thesis is that uh, there's something innate in the human animal that makes him aggressive and that makes him need uh, find a reason uh, to to hate somebody or to fear somebody and to kill somebody. That we are innately a hostile people. Do you personally believe that? And uh, I don't know, but I would certainly think that uh, historical uh, an examination of history would uh, would produce some evidence to that effect. But uh, but uh, people people tend to do that, and it's a, it's a strange thing. It's you're signaling. You know, we had a lot of fun when you played um, Sky Masterson and Guys and Dolls. Are you going to do any more musicals? Well, I heard my... I, they tried to record my singing in that. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't sing any better than a kangaroo. And um, so what they had to do was... I'd sing one phrase, like, Your eyes are the eyes... And then they'd cut, because I'd be off-key. And so they put the whole thing together in tiny little segments. And uh, finally, uh, uh, after they got through the whole thing, they put it all together. They found that I hadn't taken one breath during the whole song. <laughs> Whenever you come through Philadelphia, please come in and we'll talk on any of your favorite subjects. Okay, I'd like to talk about it. just for two seconds about your voice. It has a very nice quality. Thank you. Very restful quality and very soothing. Kind of like pulverized walnuts with uh, what do they call it uh, sandalwood oh I hope all of our listeners are <laughs> paying close attention no, it's, been, it's been very pleasant it's been Thank brief, you. but uh, pleasant encounter right? we'll all be watching okay. for more tour and all your future don't watch too close <laughs> well today we're interrupting a gentleman uh, participating in lunch Marlon Brown okay do you bite your nails no, I don't. I got a dog that does it when I'm asleep at night. You know, I, so I sleep with my hands outside the bike. You know. <laughs> had the footwork of Willie Pep in the old days. <laughs> I want to ask you something. You know, uh, you're a very soft-spoken individual, right? It was in a while. Yeah, but why is that? I mean, why do you speak so softly? I mean, don't you ever have an urge to <laughs> roar out at someone? Would you mind saying that again? Roar? <laughs> yeah, I like, like that. Well, I uh, I get off once in a while, and if my secretary doesn't tell the maid to clean the cracker crumbs out of the bed, and I <laughs> roll around on them and toss and turn, and I... Uh, you sort of you sort of raise your voice in anger. Right? Well, I have my I have my I think we all have our moments in life, don't you? I think so. And when the dog comes in and and, and is disrespectful to the rug, I, I think that you. Have a chance to bark back at him, huh? Yes. I was talking about you last week, Mario, when I was in Israel with Yul Brenner, and uh, he was telling me that he had enjoyed very much making the movie uh, Moratori with you, and I imagine you enjoyed it too. You play a German in it, right? That's is richtig. Jawohl, das ist bestimmt. Ich habe mir auch gesehen, dass schon gewohnt in der Bau. Jawohl. And du, du bist ein sehr schwerfender Mensch, der haben sie wohl mit dem Ufer gebucht. Ja, das ist sehr gut. Vielleicht wir können gehen, wenn du hast fertig essen und gucken vor ein, ein äh, junger, junger Fräulein, äh, vielleicht ein bisschen mehr essen, ja? Mehr essen, ja. ja. <laughs> mehr essen und less essen. <laughs> well, friends on the Berlin Network, we're delighted to be visiting with you today. Yeah, how do you do? We, we I have changed my wig, please. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on the side. What's in the future, Marlon, after Moratorium? I don't know. I'm not an astrologer. Um, the future is difficult to predict. And, uh, I mean, are you asking me a little, <laughs> literal question? 
No, no, it's a loaded question like that because I know that you have great concern for the American Indians. And, well, uh, I, you know, I'd like to... I mean, we have a lot of fun, and, and that's, uh, that's really not something I can be flippant about. Uh, uh, it's not something that I really could go into here, but I'm sure that we're all... Uh, uh, I mean, I found that when I've talk, talked about the American Indian to people, I've been amazed about how little anybody knows about it. And uh, uh, nobody knows that, for instance, the uh, mortality rate of uh, Indian children is five to one in comparison with, with uh, any other minority group here in America. I think that it would benefit all of us to realize what the American Indian is, what his position is. I hope to make a film on the subject. Good luck to you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your dinner okay, today. Okay, keep your left up. Right, I will do indeed, and look out for the ride, too, because I use it on the left hook. Right. <laughs> uh, your turn. Well, I'm representing WNAC in, in Boston, and our viewing audience would love to know why you're here and for you to tell us about your latest movie. How old are you, about 23? No, I'll be 21 in March. 21 in March? Yes. But well, that's supposed to be a woman's privilege. What is Her age. What are you talking like? Uh, you're talking like an American adage. Uh, no, please, do tell us about a new movie. Well, why? <laughs> <laughs> because we're looking forward to seeing it in Boston. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I, 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 uh... <clears throat> we no. certainly are. Uh... Excuse me, I didn't mean to touch your ankle. Uh... Uh, well, what, would you, what can I tell you about it? Oh, should I tell us something about, oh, behind the scenes while you were making the picture, or... Um, How far found? behind the scenes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just some interesting things that our audience would like to hear about. Well, uh... I'm sure you've run into... Oh... Bernie Wickey smokes the worst cigars of anybody I ever knew. <laughs> He's he outside. hasn't made a... Huh? He's outside. Well, I'll tell him. We'll get him in here. I'll tell him. He knows that. I hate his cigars. And uh, he smoked cigars that were made of... They got some some shoes from some Italian fishermen who have rope soles on there. Rope sole sandals. They crush them up and mash them around and send them to Vladivostok. She was Miss USA. Is that a fact? Yes, it is. Well, I... <laughs> I could have guessed. Well, that's very sweet of you. Well, you know, it's unusual to find somebody as beautiful as you are who is uh, also a college graduate and seriously interested in uh, world affairs and uh, studying law. Well, I, I enjoyed being Miss USA, but I'd like to grow old gracefully. So I thought you talk out of the side of your mouth. Did you ever notice that? No, you talk, you talk. It's charming. It's a it's unintentional. A, it's a physical idiosyncrasy, but it's uh, it's a charming one. What what speech did you make when you accepted uh, the title of Miss USA? They had asked me to curb, or what I would do to curb juvenile delinquency at the time. I thought the best thing to do was to raise the age requirement to... Um, your hair is over of... your eyes. We can't, I can't, we can't see your right eye. Oh, no, talking from the side of my mouth and come, wouldn't want to do that. But um, I thought we'd raise, raise the age requirement in school so that youngsters would stay until they were about 16 or 18, or at least high school graduates. Do you think that would help curb juvenile delinquency? I think it would be a start keeping them busy, study more. Do, even the Dr. Ralph Bunches or people of this nature who you know, do strive for education and achieve it, no matter what the obstacles. I think a little more of this kind of spirit would help us in, in tremendous. I oh, wonder that <clears throat> most, um, certainly I'm not an expert in the field, but most education today seems to be aimed toward supplying people with information. Yes. And giving people information as to how to make money and prepare themselves for making money and has very little to do with preparing them for the problems that they meet in life, on an emotional level, on a philosophical level. We'd like to thank Marlon Brando for being with us and giving us a little bit of insight about his views of education and... Um, I try to stay neutral somehow. Why? She was Miss USA. What year was that? In 64. 1964, she was Miss USA. And I asked her if she was pretty, and she said she... Well, that was a subjective opinion, and she didn't really know. And it was only six judges that decided, so I don't think it, 
It wasn't very decisive. But you went through several stages to arrive finally at the uh, uh, the title, didn't you? Yes. So Um, it was really more than six judges. Well, six here and six there, and I was very honored. But, Mr. Brando, thank you so much for being my guest. (laughs) Good night, folks. Smoke after most of the guys. (laughs) But first, remember Marlon Brando... In the 20th Century Fox motion picture, Moratori. It's a great picture, and he's a great actor. For God's sake, go see that, will you? Because you really won't know how to proceed in life if you don't see Moratori. It's one of the most important things you'll ever do.